studied L'Hopital's rule, we're able to discuss something that's called relative rates of growth. Basically with this concept, what we're trying to do is just figure out which function is growing faster. If I were a biologist and I had to do two different functions that were growing or something like that, I might need to figure out which one was growing faster. Or if I'm in economics and I wanted to find out which function is going to grow faster, sometimes it's very obvious by looking at the functions, but sometimes we're not sure or we can actually verify using um, this concept of relative rates of growth. So at the end of this lesson, you'll be able to determine how fast functions grow in relation to each other. And we will definitely be making use of L'Hopital's rule as we do this. All right, f, and f of x and g of x are going to be, will be positive for x sufficiently large. So as we get bigger and bigger, my f of x and g of x will be actually positive numbers. All right f of x will grow faster than g of x as x approaches infinity if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x divided by g of x is equal to infinity. And basically that makes sense because if f is larger, then when I divide it by something smaller, I'll end up getting infinity. All right, and g of x will grow slower than f of x if the limit of x x, I really don't want that worded the way it is, um, f of x will grow slower than g of x if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over g of x is equal to zero. So if the denominator is growing bigger, then obviously your limit's going to equal zero. So that's what we're going to be looking at. And f and g will grow at the same rate if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over g of x is equal to some limit. So if we actually get a limit of 2 or 7 or 100 or something like that, um, as long as my answer is finite and positive, then they will grow at the same rate. All right, so let's go ahead and do some examples. So we want to find out which function grows faster as x approaches infinity. So um, basically, probably if you were to graph these, you might be able to see which one has a steeper curve and is going to grow faster. But we're just going to verify it using L'Hopital's rule. Okay, so we're or using those properties that I just gave you. So what we're going to do to test this is we're going to find the limit uh, as x approaches infinity. And it really doesn't matter which one you let f and which one be g. You'll come up with the same answer either way. So We'll do e of x over x squared. Okay, now you'll notice if I try to plug infinity in right now, I'll get e to the infinity over infinity squared. That leads me to infinity over infinity. And that is an indeterminate form, which means that I can use L'Hopital's rule. So applying L'Hopital's rule, I'm going to get the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of x squared is 2x. And then if I go to plug infinity in, I'll get e to the infinity over 2 times infinity, which will give me once again infinity over infinity. So that still led me to an indeterminate form. So L'Hopital's rule, here we come once again. I'll get the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of 2x is 2. So now this time, if I plug in infinity, I'll get e to the infinity over 2, which is equal to infinity. And since um, I did get an answer of infinity, the function that's on the top is the one that's growing faster. So I will say e to the x grows faster than x squared. And obviously an exponential function is going to grow faster than a quadratic function, but we did verify it using calculus. Alrighty, let's say I'm comparing x squared and ln x. And again, it does not matter which one goes on the top and which one goes on the bottom. I'm just going to um, keep it how it is. Um, so I'm going to get the, find the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over the natural log of x. If I go to plug in infinity, I'll get infinity squared over the natural log of infinity, that will give me infinity over infinity, which again is indeterminate. And since it's indeterminate, we get to apply L'Hopital's rule. So I'll find the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of x squared is 2x. The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x. And if I go to plug in infinity, um, just watch, I'm going to get 2 times infinity over 1 over infinity, that gives me infinity over 0, which just doesn't make sense. So I'm going to, at this step right here, actually simplify it into 2x times the reciprocal of 1 over x, which is x. So I'm going to get 2x squared. Now if I go to plug in infinity, I'll get 2 times infinity squared, which will equal 
infinity. So notice right here all the stuff that I scribbled out. I didn't get an indeterminate form. I just got something that was undefined, which just didn't really help me. So since I got infinity, I know that the top function grows faster. So x squared grows faster than the natural log of x. All right, the natural log of x and x. So I'll call this f and I'll call this g. So once again, we'll find the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x over x. And then if I go to plug infinity in, I'll get the natural log of infinity over infinity, which reduces to infinity over infinity. So once again, I got an indeterminate form, which, me, which allows me to use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to get the limit as x approaches infinity. If I take the derivative of ln x, it will be 1 over x. If I take the derivative of x, I just get 1. So that reduces to 1 over x. If I plug in infinity, I get 1 over infinity, which equals 0, which means the bottom function is growing faster. So I will say that x grows faster than the natural log of x. All right. Let's try another one. We have 2 times the square root of x minus 1 squared and x. So let's find the limit as x approaches infinity. This looks like it's going to be a little bit more daunting, but we'll see over x. All right, if I plug in infinity, I'm going to get 2 square root of infinity minus 1 squared over infinity. 2 times infinity is going to be infinity. Infinity minus 1 is still infinity. Squared is still infinity. So I will get infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form. So we will use L'Hopital, and when whoop, spelled that one wrong. When we use L'Hopital, I'll get the limit as x approaches infinity. This will be the fun part, taking the derivative of that. I think I'll come over here and do a little side trip of getting that derivative just to make my life a little easier. Okay, 2 squared of x minus 1 squared really means 2 squared of x minus 1 times 2 squared of x minus 1. Okay, so foiling this out, 2 squared of x times 2 squared of x will give me 4x minus 2 squared of x minus 2 squared of x plus 1. So taking the, whoops, let's, I'll get 4x minus 4 squared of x plus 1. And then simplifying that, I'll get 4x minus 4x to the 1 half plus 1. Okay, so now I'm ready to take the derivative. The derivative of 4x is 4. The derivative of that next part will be minus 2 x to the negative one half, and then the derivative of one is just zero, and then divided by the derivative of x is one. So just simplifying that a little bit, I'll get four minus two over the square root of x divided by one. And so now if I go to plug in infinity, I'm going to get four minus two over the square root of infinity. So I'll get four minus two over the square root of infinity will actually end up being zero. So I just get, end up getting four as my answer. So you will notice that I got a finite and positive answer for my limit, which means they both grow at the same rate. So I will say that two square root of x minus one squared and, and x both grow at the same rate. And probably by looking at it, if since I'm squaring a square root, I'm left with x, and I'm left with x, so they do grow at the same rate. Alrighty, number five. If I have three to the x and two to the x, I'm going to find the limit as x approaches infinity of three to the x over two to the x, and then if I plug infinity, I'll get three to the infinity over two to the infinity. And when I do that, I'll get infinity over infinity, which nicely gives me the, an indeterminate form, which, so I know I'm going to get to use L'Hopital. Um, please do not write down this next step because I'm just showing you something, so I just want you to watch right now. Okay, if I go to take the derivative of 3 to the x, if you recall, the derivative of a to the x is equivalent to, or a to the u, the derivative of that is a to the u du times the natural log of a. So when I do that, I'm going to get 3 to the x times 1 times the natural log of 3 over 2 to the x times 1 times the natural log of 2. Please notice that 3 to the x and 2 to the x stay in my problem. No matter how many times I apply L'Hopital's rule, 3 to the x and 2 to the x are always going to stay in my problem. So that is not going to get me anywhere.
So um, I am going to be applying L'Hopital's rule, but just not quite yet. So I'm not going to do that. I do notice that since I do have a variable power, that this sets me up nicely for a logarithmic differentiation problem. So that's exactly what I'm going to do on this example. So logarithmic di differentiation, remember we're going to do y equals the natural, oh, we're going to write down, we're finding the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 to the x over 2 to the x. And now we're going to take the natural log of both sides. So we'll get natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 3 to the x over 2 to the x. Okay, and then a few things I can do over on this side. Let me just rewrite the left side. Okay, on this side, first of all, since there's division, we can separate it into subtraction. So I'll have the natural log of 3 to the x minus the natural log of 2 to the x. All right, and then what we can do from here is bump my powers out front. So I now will have the natural log of y equals the limit as x approaches infinity of x ln 3 minus x ln 2. And then I think what I'm going to do from here is actually factor out an x, see if that makes that better. So if I factor out an x, I'll get the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 2. And I'm still finding the limit as x approaches infinity. So I'll get the natural log of y. All right, so now from here, um, I am going to say we are going to get, um, if I let x approach infinity, I'll end up getting infinity times the natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 2, which is a finite number. So infinity times a finite number is still going to be infinity. So I have the natural log of y is equal to infinity. If I do the logarithmic root loop, I'll get e to the infinity is equal to y. e to the infinity is still infinity. So I've just found out that my limit was infinity. So since my limit is infinity, the numerator is going to grow faster. So 3 to the x grows faster than 2 to the x. And probably it was pretty much common sense because if something triples or if something doubles, the one that triples is going to grow faster. But we officially proved it using calculus. So hopefully now you can use relative rates of growth to decide which function grows faster relative to another one.